Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Peter Schroeder in one of the coolest, coolest backgrounds I have seen. Is this virtual or is this really your background? What do you think? <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. It looks real. It looks I mean, pretty could real. This? Could I go like out? I don't know. Freaking amazing. <laughs> this is just, oh man, Peter, I love it already. Now, okay, now Peter's here with Telzio. Did I pronounce that correctly? That's right, yeah. All right, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that. But before we get into all that, Peter, would love for you to introduce yourself. Who is Peter Schroeder? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a loaded question. And here we go. We started. <laughs> um, Peter Schroeder is a guy from Denmark who moved to LA about 10 years ago, uh, has a background in music uh, and tech. Uh, kind of simultaneously my whole life um and uh, uh running a, a tech company right now uh, officially never stopped being in music just kind of happened to not do it right now <laughs> so so tell us tell me a little bit about your music career because uh you mentioned you're in tech but you're also a dj if that's correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, i was I think 15 years uh, professionally uh, playing all over the world, um, all kinds of uh, different things from from uh, small nightclubs to to big festivals. Wow! How did you how did that kind of get into the music world? How do you how do you get into being a DJ? Well, I mean, my my parents are musicians, uh, so it probably starts there. Uh, my dad was out was out on gigs my whole childhood uh, every weekend, and my mom was a pianist, and and so so I, it's in the family. Um, but I think when I was in maybe third grade or something like that, I saw a DJ at a, at a school dance, and I was like, that is so cool how he can just play a song and people are having a good time because of what he puts on. That's really cool. So I just got a couple of ghetto blasters and started playing at my friend's birthday parties, and you know from there on, eventually I was old enough to to get a gig at a nightclub and and. Yeah, then I just kind of uh, did it from there. Wow. So I, I really love that inspiring story because you know, music in my family is very big. You know, my, my dad actually grew up as a, a musician for Las Supremos over there in Texas. So folks, that are, if you if you lived around that era, you know, back in the 80s, you probably have saw my dad playing. But I would love to hear now, what is, what is your current venture? Tell us about what your current entrepreneurial venture uh, you're doing. Uh, what does it do? So it tells you is um, if you really boil it down, a phone service provider, a phone company, uh, we provide a business phone service. So we build our own platform. It's a software as a service thing. So it's in the cloud, uh, build a, a platform where you can kind of manage everything and then take and receive calls anywhere in the world with your cell phone or a desk phone or a computer. Um, so that means that, you know, you have employees anywhere in the world. You can, you can have employees anywhere in the world and they can take the calls just as if they were in your office. Um, there's no hardware to install or anything like that. And then we just build a lot of cool features around that. And if anything you would really expect from, from business phone service. And I feel like that is something that is drastically needed in the healthcare world, uh, <laughs> because there are a lot of, you know, um, working from home professionals, but more importantly, having that security, right? Mm -hmm. Having having that secure conversation that has uh, these, you know, these safeguards around it, so the conversation doesn't get out. Exactly, and that that's where you know HIPAA and all that kind of stuff is is is, is very important. So it's one of the the most uh, the things we've spent most time on over the past couple of years is really you know the security because. We see all our competitors getting hacked, and we definitely don't want to become one of those guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we take that that kind of serious, yeah. So can you can you take me back to the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey? What motivated you to take the leap and start your own uh, business? Um, I, I've I've kind of always done that, and and, and it's ne never really been a, a a conscious thing for me to start businesses per se. It's it's more. It just happens to to be what you do when you do what I do. So like, uh, like, like when I was fourteen, I, I started a website, um, and and that became the biggest artist community, like a so social media before social media even existed, um, for uh, artists in Scandinavia, and um, eventually got got acquired when I was eighteen, and that that happened to become a company because you know you had to you have expenses and you have uh, uh, you know you you have some revenue and, and then you have a company right. Um, later on, I started a record label, and that was really just out of uh, you know interest, but also because I had a band and, and I saw what what the label that we were signed to, what they did, and I was like, I, I can do that. I mean, I mean, I just side note, I have major ADD, so that's a very <laughs> important trait. Um, but yeah, I, I just see what they can do, and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. And then I had a record label, I started signing other artists, right? 
And 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 when I started this current company, uh, Telcio, it was really just because I needed a phone system for another project I was working on. And I couldn't find anything out of the box that was good and I could afford uh, and had the features. So I'm like, okay, I'll just build it myself. And, um, you know, all of a sudden I, I had a lot of fun with it. And all of a sudden I had a, this little product that, you know, could actually be used for, from other by, by other people. And then you know, let's put it online and see if someone wants to to sign up. And they did. And now it's been 10 years. Man, that is, it's, it's, I love the stories because it's like people, I think, uh, I kind of feel like these ideas uh, and big businesses populate overnight, but it takes a lot yeah. of time and different iterations and pivots and things of that nature. Now, with that said, what was the biggest challenge you face as a new entrepreneur and how did you overcome it? So I think when I first started out, um, uh, if, if we skip the first company uh, where I was just a teenager, but when I had my record label, uh, I hadn't, for the first, first of all, I hadn't uh, gotten the, the diagnosis IDD. So I didn't know as much about what that means uh, as I do today. But I also didn't know as much about myself back then. And, and I thought I could do everything. Uh, and I wanted to do everything because everything was fascinating and it's exciting. And I wanted to be part of it. And I wanted to help everyone. I'm a people pleaser. So I, everyone who asked me for anything, I would definitely do it. And I just got too much on my plate. And eventually I, I started, you know, burning bridges because uh, the one thing that's worse than saying no to someone asking you about something is saying yes and then, then not doing it, right? Like it's, it's, it's way worse than just saying no in the first place. And I didn't know that. So, um, you know, I, 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 I burned some bridges and I, I just like got too much on my plate. And eventually my, my booking agent back then said, uh, said to me, she pulled me aside and said, hey, uh, you got to fix this. There's, there's something wrong. This, this is not you. And she facilitated the sale of my my label, and and I basically did a reset for for a few months where I didn't uh, didn't do anything. And you know, I, it's it's interesting because you know I think starting a new business kind of you know it has its rewarding moments, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at times, and then it has a lot of its challenges. But well, let's let's talk about the rewards first. What mm -hmm. are some of the aspects that you found relatively easy or enjoyable during that early stage of an entrepreneurial journey? I think. Um... Just doing a little bit of everything. I think one 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 thing that really benefited me was was because we didn't have any money and we didn't raise money. Uh, we tried in the beginning. Um, we can talk about that separately. But but um, it's it's uh, the whole thing about uh, having to do everything yourself is kind of exciting, and that that really gave me some 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 understanding, especially because I did customer support, tech support, and and, and sales. It gave me an understanding of what is it that our customers want, what is it that they need, what is it that they don't even know that they want uh, or need, you know. Um, so, so it allowed me to not only build the product, but but build a better product than our competitors because you know I, I had some insights that these people that that run those companies just don't. Uh, I mean, I think it's important that the CEO should really just sit down and do tech support for a few days a year. Uh, it's 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 the best it's the best way to uh, to get in touch with your customers. Yeah, you know, I feel like entrepreneurs, you know, business owners, you kind of have to be the jack of all trade, master of none. Uh, and you have to be willing as a leader and a CEO and a founder of the organization. If you're going to ask, you know, one of your employees to, you know, get down on hands and knees and scrub the floors, as a true leader, you have yeah. to be willing to get down and on your hands and knees and scrub the floor with that individual. Because I think that shows a few things. One, it allows you as a leader to kind of understand what your employees go through on a daily basis. So you, when they come to you with issues mm -hmm. and concerns, you now have practical sense of what that looks like, right? Because you've, you've yeah. gone through it as well. So you're able to relate to it. But more mm -hmm. importantly, the relatability piece is also huge, right? There's when you're a, when you're a leader of an organization, you know, retaining employees is, is a very valuable thing because hiring and recruiting and training is expensive. And so when you right. get a good employee, you want to retain them. And if you're a, a leader that is disconnected from your, your frontline employees, it's very difficult to retain those individuals. And so that relatability is really important, making sure you're getting in there, you know, asking the questions, maybe doing a round, uh, you know, of what do I mean by rounding is actually going out to the different departments and rounding on them, having conversations with them, seeing what's working, what's not working, because truthfully, some of the best thoughts and ideas might come from those individuals that are working your oh. front line. 100%, 100%. And, and just, just keep that thing in mind. Nothing is above you. Nothing is below you. you you're, you're everywhere. Uh, and, and it's, it's true. Like you literally get the best ideas. I, I, 
got all the, the 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 features that we built first that our competitors copied later on. I got them from our customers. And and it was not necessarily that they said they wanted certain things, but it was really just I, I heard what their pain points were. I heard what what they're struggling with, what 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 is it that they're trying to do? And then you start thinking, okay, how can I fix that for them? What can I build, uh, invent for them that that will fix this thing? I would never have known those things without talking to them. Yeah, and you know, one of the things you mentioned too is you know, under promise, over deliver, yeah. right? Is is you know, one thing um, is is it's really important, folks, for for understanding this is really when you, the under promise own deliver is, is really a sales tactic, right? And what I mean by that and saying, hey, I can actually do this project in, in two weeks and then you have it done in a week. Okay, yeah. that's over delivering. Uh, under promising is, is saying, hey, I can give you, I can give you these two for sure. I have these two like tools or two software tactics I can give you. And then you present them with three. Right. Uh, again, you, you don't want to also, you don't want to like overstate what you're able to do it. And again, you know, the greatest, the, you know, the greatest form of a compliment is, is somebody mimicking what you do. Right. I can't yeah, remember yeah, exactly, exactly the exact phrase. Right. But yeah. you know, so when your competitors are out there doing exactly what you're doing, I mean, that's a great form of, uh, that's a flattering. Thank you. Appreciate it, it. it really is. I, I, I don't take it personally. I don't, uh, you know, get upset. It is upsetting to see when someone that copies it one to one and then makes more money on it than you do. That can be a little, mm. but you know what, at the end of the day, you made something good that's working and that just validates it. So I, I don't really take it personally. Yes. I think it's the, the greatest form of flattery is in, in uh, intimidation or in Yes, you guys know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> when you imitate somebody, <laughs> imitate. <laughs> yeah, Man, exactly. tripping over my words, it's, it's getting late, folks. I'm telling you. So now let's talk about, you know, we talked about some of the fun stuff, some of the easy things, right? Mm -hmm. But let's let's kind of talk about some of the harder things, right? Mm -hmm. So what would you say, you know, what were some of the biggest mistakes you made in your career and what did you learn from them? I would say um, in, in this current company, not hiring a sales director or something like that first. Um, that was my mistake. So I'm, I'm, I'm not revenue driven in my mind at all. I'm, I'm very much product and, uh, just want to build something that's great for the user. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are running a company and, and I have a responsibility towards my employees and, 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 uh, you know, customers as well that we keep growing and that we do do well so we can keep making a good product. Right. Um, and people can, can get their paycheck and, and, you know, take care of their, their families. So, so. Obviously, I have to think about that, and we could have grown a lot faster if we, had, you know, done that from the beginning. We, like I said, we are ten years in, and we took the long route. Uh, one thing is we didn't take funding, and we, we also never paid for advertising. So um, we, we, we literally just like took the the, the longest road you could pos possibly think of, um, in an industry that's dominated by huge, you know, multi-billion-dollar international corporations. Those are the kinds of people we go up against. So. Um, you know, having someone that is revenue driven, um, just like a general mindset, uh, would probably have been something that I should have done earlier on than, than what I did. You know, I feel like that's, um, it, it, I ask this question often to guests, and I think that's the thing that they talk about often is outsourcing uh, the things that they're not good at, right? Oh, yeah. And making sure they find an expert in that field. Um, and I, I'm the same way. I'm kind of like, okay, I need to start outsourcing a lot of this, you know, SEO, social media stuff. Cause I, I can do it right. But it's super time consuming. And I think there's somebody better that can do it for me. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the thing because, uh, and, and, and to go back to the ADD thing, that's, that's even more pronounced there because, uh, the problem about that diagnosis is, is, is you, you, uh, you, you don't get things done that you're not interested in. I was, I was told that my whole childhood, it was not that I was lazy because, I wasn't, I did so many things and I wasn't bad at what I did. But if there's something I'm not interested in, it's just not getting done. It, it could literally take two, 20 minutes to do something and it will, you know, I'll postpone it half a year um, and, and it's, a, it's a drag. So, so understanding that about yourself and then hiring people around you that are good at those things. So you can be good because I see this diagnosis as a, as a superpower. I, I will be able to, I'm, you know, I can go to the bottom of the rabbit hole and start digging for more. It's, it's a, uh, uh, you know, it, it allows me to do certain things that that other people might not be able to, but it also has the opposite uh, effect, right? And 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 understanding that and having people around you that then are good at those things, that is amazing. Yes, you know that is very true. In fact, folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know tell a personal story here. Just last week, and I've been struggling a lot this last year. It's been a lot in 2024. Been going through a lot, 
And so I went and decided to, you know, seek some professional help from a counselor. I'm like, hey, been getting going through this, uh, been feeling really dumb my entire life. I'll be completely transparent. And folks, if you go back and listen to my individual episode that I recorded for myself, well, I talk about my, you know, when I went was in the individual education program in school and talking about, I just really didn't feel adequate. Well, sure enough, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD. And it made a lot of sense. And for the first time in my life, again, 40 years, I kind of don't feel dumb anymore. I felt right. like all of these things I was going through were validated because, again, to, to your point, you know, Peter, when you're going down these rabbit holes, if I'm not interested in it, it's going to take me a long time to complete it. However, I notice if I'm interested in something, my focus on that project is razor thin, like I'm on it. Right. Yeah. And yep. it's interesting because sometimes I'll be in a conversation, you know, a senior leader, or executive with a healthcare institution having a conversation. And then my mind will wander onto something completely different. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back to the conversation, but yeah. I'm like, holy crap, I don't know what the heck they just said the last two minutes at all. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's, it's not intentional. It's like your ears. It's like, it's like all of a sudden everything is like white noise and you, yeah. you really can't help it. And yeah. And again, for the first time, and again, folks, the only reason I'm saying this, because one, don't be afraid to talk about mental health. Don't, don't be afraid because I was always afraid to talk about this. And I found out that it's actually not me. It's actually a, a, something I actually have that I could be corrected uh, mm -hmm. as well. And so that was actually reassuring. But again, just like entrepreneurship, you have to talk about your ideas. You have to talk about your thoughts and your emotions because there are help. There's people out there that have advice that can help you be better. And so I'm very thankful for my counselor for, for kind of highlighting this issue for me because Peter, man, I'm telling you, you go down this rabbit hole with this disease and and if it is not of interest to you, I'm I'm waiting. Yeah, no, it's spot on. It's, uh, everything you said right there is is, is so accurate. Uh, I can I can I can recognize everything. Uh, you know, and especially the thing about your your mind wandering. I can do that when I read a book. So I can read three pages of a book and then yes. wait, what did I just read? Totally. <laughs> like, All the time. Like, how can how can you even do that? How is it possible I, it's, to read? It's weird. Read? It's totally weird. And, yeah. and it's funny, like I tell people, like, I hate phone numbers. I absolutely yeah. hate phone numbers because you know, you'll give me your area code and I'll remember 503. Okay. But after that, yeah. my my once you start naming more than like four numbers, my mind, it's like my short-term memory is just shot. It yeah. just it doesn't work the way that most people's do. And that, that's okay because yeah. I'm starting to realize that. However, my entire life, I've been trying to, you know, figure it out in other ways by like reading even more, like going mm -hmm. back and having to read the book twice. However, mm -hmm. uh, to Peter's point, if yeah. if I'm in a fantasy book, like a book that I'm interested in, it is like tunnel vision on that book. I'm like, my mind is not anywhere else, but inside that world of yeah. fantasies and dragons and elves. Yeah, folks, I'm a nerd. I don't care. I love <laughs> oh, yeah. to read about the dragons, but it's interesting because you can just narrow down on that really, really quickly. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a fascinating thing. And you know what? It's it's I don't see it as a diagnosis, like like a bad thing. It, it, like I said, it, it's a superpower uh, if you understand it and if you can you know turn it to your uh, advantage, right? So then, because of a superpower, and and there's a lot of people that have it to some degree. And I mean, I'm surprised how many of my friends to some. I, granted, I have been in the music industry for a long time, and most people there haven't. <laughs> so so, but 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 I'm I'm surprised how many people actually have it. And I think it's they say five to seven percent of adults, uh, to some degree have have ADD or ADHD. Yeah. And then again, folks, I, I never know this until last week, I finally sought professional help and did this, you know, questionnaire and sure enough, right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you know, like Peter kind of says, it's, it's a superpower. And, and kind is. of like Spider Man says, you know, the great Peter Parker, no pun intended here, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? Yeah. And that that is also the form of a leader. Now, we talked about leadership, how do you define leadership and what qualities do you think are essential to being a great leader? So I think, um, first of all, I think there's a, a, a common misconception between leaders and managers. Uh, you know, people, people team tend to, to, uh, to confuse those two. So first of all, I want to say I'm a horrible manager. Uh, I hate telling people what to do and I'm really bad at following up with it and making sure that they actually did it, which a manager should do. Um, so for that same reason, our staff uh, headcount in, in, this, in this company is, is probably 10% of our competitors uh, with the same amount of customers. Uh, and that's really just because I, I don't want a lot of people. I just want something that are really good 
and can just pick out the things of my brain that I want to do and without me even saying it. Um, so, so, so I've been able to find those over the years, but um, that, that's, 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 you know, managers are, are, are the ones that tell people what to do and make sure that it's done and, and, and runs things. A leader to me is really someone who has some kind of vision and can get people on board with it, get people excited about that same vision and get them to, you know, follow and, and not only follow, but maybe even go in front of you and, and do it better than, than what you could do, but just get, 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 get that, uh, a common vision spread out throughout your organization and get everyone on board with it so that everyone works towards the same goal without, and everyone being excited about doing it because you can't get good stuff done if people are not excited about what they do and they need freedom to do that. Um, so a good leader is someone who, who, can, who can inspire uh, others to, to, to you know, walk towards the same goal. Yeah, no, that's a great point. In fact, it takes me back to that like meme of you know a manager is an individual that's pushing the employees from the back up the hill and then yeah. a leader is the person that's in front of everybody leading them up the hill right and, and that's kind of the difference right because again to your point uh it's you have to create inspiration and i talk about this also in other episodes about creating that value proposition right what do consumers feel like when they work with you what's what's that feeling like right they want to feel cared for and about they want that concierge service right they truly want personalized value uh, and and they they want it to feel like it's catered to them specifically yeah and you know that is a good point because uh, one of the things that i learned early on when i was doing tech support uh, was that and, and this comes from other companies that i saw a few others that do this if you talk to your customers the same way as you talk to your friends don't put on a, a customer service hat don't talk with different words use the same words as you do with your friends if you talk to them like that it's going to give you two things one thing is it's gonna, you know, show the customer that you have so much uh, extra energy and so you know you're so in control of of your product and you know everything about it that you don't have to pretend like you're your customer. So you, you're not going by some kind of script. Um, and the other thing is, is you, your customers are gonna just you know, give you so much more bandwidth to do your job better because they believe that you're good and you're the expert. You, they don't sit around and wait for you to transfer them to a, a third line a help desk or something like that. No, they they believe. Oh, I I got the big cheese here. This guy knows what I'm talking about. So, just be completely normal. Don't don't put on that uh, you know uh, sir uh, hat and and uh, talk to people with with different words. Just use the same. That is an important thing. Yes, I agree. In fact, um, the 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 way I kind of gauge intelligence is if mm -hmm. you're able to explain something to me in a way a kindergarten could understand it, then I know you understand your product. Exactly. If you're using like the box bullets and like hitting the key phrases, I'm kind of like, are you a salesperson? Because yeah. a salesperson hits the bullets. Right. The founder, the person who knows their product, will explain it easy enough that a kindergarten can understand it. Exactly. And 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 that's actually a good point as well. You know, that the founders will always be the ones that can sell the product the best. And that's because they don't really have to sell it. They just believe so much in what they're building. And know so much about it that no one else, you know, all the all the little benefits and the reasons why certain things are built in a certain way, um, and that's hard to teach someone. You know, it's, it just takes time, um, which is, again is also why I like having just a very very small uh, staff and some really experts on it. If you go read our our uh, tech support, or sorry, our our reviews on our uh, company online, they all mention our tech support uh, and and how good it is because well, there's just three guys that are doing it and. You know, normally you say that uh, I think it's seven thousand dollars, uh, seven thousand users uh, that a tech supporter should be able to handle. Um, you know, wow. on, on like generally, ours are over a hundred thousand there. So Jesus. you know, yeah, uh, it's really just because product is solid, right? But 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 they know their stuff, so they don't really have to spend a lot long time for, on each one. You know, and, and it's it's interesting. Like to that point, you know. It's 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 crazy how we, we're talking about leadership and we're talking about the importance of that. When a founder goes out and they talk about their product and the reason you mentioned they, they don't really have to sell anything is because they have that that passion for it. Mm -hmm. Being a leader, right, and engaging your employees 
will create that same passion within them so they can also go help you build that brand. So that's, again, yeah. this is very organic conversation, but it's all coming full circle for you folks. So I mm -hmm. hope you understand it. The importance of leadership, the importance of engaging your employees, importance of getting down on your hands and knees and scrubbing with them and learning the ins and outs. Because again, you're as the founder, you're not going to be able to be in every sales room, right? But you still want your passion and your message to be conveyed to the point that it makes a sell, right? And that's learned from the founders. Yeah, it's brought on. And, and uh, you know what? I think one really important thing to add to that is you need to give your employees, you know, room to do what they want to do and what they feel is the right thing. Um, also, when you think or know that this is going to fail, if there's a, pro a product or a project they want to run with and you just already know, well, it's going to fail because of this and this and this, just let them do it uh, because... If, if they're allowed to do things on their terms and, and th then they have this autonomy that creates their, the passion that they need to do even better things that you know is gonna, it's gonna work, right? Uh, I think it's called, um, there's, there's a book about this uh, on, on Netflix. I think it's called uh, No Rules Rule. And I really recommend reading that because uh, I was surprised uh, how many parallels there are in terms of how they run Netflix. Um, and the culture there and 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 how i've been uh, doing telshio for the past 10 years uh for me I've, I've never went to school for this and i never really studied it but but it, it, it reassured me that we are doing something right because we're doing a lot of things differently than everyone else but it turns out that you know it's not completely wrong and and that book is is, is really really good on that particular topic this is very true. In fact, I mean, you look at Google, the Google search bar was created by an executive at Google, right? And yeah. the uh, Frito-Lay's Red Hot Cheeto was created by um, the gentleman who was actually a housekeeper at Frito-Lay's for a while. Now he's an, you know, VP at Frito-Lay. So again, creating, creating these spaces for employees to explore their own, uh, you know, imaginations and uh, visionary kind of entrepreneurial endeavors is very important. Because I think it's actually not talked about enough. In fact, it seems like, you know, at a very young age, you know, once you get into middle school, hey, stop joking around, stop being imaginary, stop, you know, playing with, no, never yeah, stop keep, imagining, keep never yeah. stop innovating, always keep inspiring to do something different. And that's why I'm saying, hey, dragons and elves, folks, get in it, get into yeah. all sorts of crazy things because you will start to find ideas in places you never threw ideas came from. Uh, traveling is a great way to find ideas. I mean, look at Starbucks, right? Starbucks was created because they visited Europe. And he's like, hey, I want to bring this to the States. Now we have Starbucks in every single corner, right? Yeah. And so just, you know, having that experience. Now, what would you say, you know, we're talking about experimental, we're talking about leaderships, but you're also talking about some of these traits as being an entrepreneur. Yeah. What three traits do you think are critical for an entrepreneurial success and how did they help you? Well, I can, yeah, I can only talk to, to mine, obviously, but, but, I think um, you almost touched about it, uh, touched on it. Uh, negativity and um, and stubbornness. Those are, and, and, I, and I, I don't say persistence. I say stubbornness, uh, <laughs> very very specifically. <laughs> um, so 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 naivety um, is 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 really important. Um, you have to have this this uh, uh, playful uh, explorer uh, explorer gene um, in you to go out and build something great. Uh, if you think about how irrational it was for me to start a phone company, I mean, who does that? And you know, I think you can go up against AT and T with uh, a four hundred one k that you cashed out, or your wife's four hundred one k that you cashed out, uh, sixteen thousand dollars, and think you can compete against AT and T uh, and Verizon. That makes no sense. But uh, I knew I had a good product, and I knew I had something that could that I could sell to a few people. I didn't think about, hey, I'm gonna compete with these people. I'm gonna I'm just going to carve out my little own corner over here and then uh, get some some people to buy this product. Um so so this naivety that that you can, you know, actually make it in a in an industry. That's important. And then stubbornness is really uh this 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 things that 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 really drives me most is when people tell me no. Uh if you don't want to see me succeed, don't ever tell me that I can't do something. Oh that's... man. Exactly. <laughs> that's fire that's, that's... Yeah. Throw, throw some gasoline on the fire because now you just pissed me off and I'm going to make sure I do it. Exactly. And I'm going to show the whole world too uh, that you were wrong. So <laughs> I'm very stubborn and my wife will definitely testament to that. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that really drive me and I think it's important. And, and I don't even know what to say for the third. I think those two are, are, are just like so, so 
incredibly important. And maybe if I was to say a third thing is is really understand yourself and understand your weaknesses. That's probably it. But yeah. Yeah, it's a great point. I'm, I'm folks, I'm gonna be completely transparent here. I had a family member when I was younger. And I remember this to this day, I'm not gonna say who it was, I'm not gonna call any names. But I do have a family member that specifically said, looked at me at the dinner table and said, you'll never go to college. Guess what, folks, I graduated from Portland State, and then I got my undergraduate degree from Syracuse University. And every time I thought about it, I thought about that person. And I remember seeing that person's face. And I remember like, big middle finger in the air, tell me what else I can't do so I can prove it to you. And I, I agree. I, I agree. Prove, I will prove you wrong 110%. If you tell me no, if you can't say me, I can't count Matt Everest with a bike on my back, shit, I'll put two bikes on it just to prove you wrong. You know, <laughs> I saw, I, I saw, I saw a, a car with one of those custom uh, number plates, uh, license plates the other day. Uh, I think it was in Vegas. I saw it a, a, a while ago. It says, told you. And I was just, yes. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> It was a, it was a big you. Bentley or something like that, you know, yeah. told you. <laughs> Man, and, and again, I, folks, like I think, I, I don't mean this in a malice way, but the the person that hates on you the most is probably someone you already know, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, mostly it's people that, you know, they grew up to school with, they're around, they don't want to see you succeed. And then your biggest, your biggest supporter right now is somebody you probably have never met. Yeah. So I um, want you to go out there and network and meet with people. Now, one of the things you also mentioned, Peter, was like having to compete against the AT and T and T Mobile's of the world. Mm -hmm. What sets your company apart from competitors in the market? So, besides the fact that we have not been down since 2016, which is completely unheard of, our competitors say like, "Oh, we have 99.999 percent uptime." Well, that compares to eight hours of downtime a year. That's pretty bad. But, but we haven't been down since 2016. That's one thing. We have a good product. But I think the main thing is really my Danish background, my, my mentality. Um, one thing that I, I I really hate that doesn't sit well me well with me is is companies that have these plans that you know uh, you have a, a startup plan and a, a business plan and then you have an enterprise plan. And for to get all the really good features, you have to buy the enterprise plan. Pink right. afford that. So why is it that the enterprises that have already made it and that are making lots of money? have to, you know, they, they get to get all the important things that, you know, will set you apart and that will accelerate your business. And the other ones don't. That that just, like, it doesn't compute. So um, one thing that I uh, did from the beginning with the, with the company is we, we, we did a different billing model than, and in the beginning it was really hard to ex actually explain this to people about how, why this was better because 10 years ago this was pretty much unheard of. But but instead of having uh, you know a, a user plan where you pay a fixed fee per user and then you get unlimited calling and all that, we just charge you for the minutes and the text you send, right? And then you get all the features from the beginning. So you get the same features as Samsung and Facebook. You know all our biggest customers. You know if you're a company with two employees, you get the exact same things, and you pay the same minute rate. Granted, you can get a better minute rate if you sign a contract and or if you like. Uh, by a lot of minutes, you know, we will we'll give you a little bit of discount, but not too much. We, we don't want to set, set set people apart. And 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 that way, uh, you know, it's it's fair for everyone. Everyone has the same playing field from the beginning. But another thing that's interesting is, you know, we, it works for us because, and, and it scales, you know, so all of a sudden we can we can be appealing to, to, to a lot, uh, you know, a wide range of customers because, you know, if you're a two-person employee, well, then you probably don't talk as much as a company with 5,000 employees, right? So it scales, and and on top of that, um, you know, you you just you just get customers that will stick with stick with you for a long time and and kind of grow with us. Um, I I love that approach, and I've seen it, you know, really spread uh, not just with the telecom, but uh, all kinds of businesses. Stripe uh, for payment processors do the same thing, and uh, AWS actually, uh, Amazon Web Services, they they're doing it the same way as well now, or they have have been. Um, but but so many different companies are starting to do this now but not 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You hear that Salesforce? So many companies are doing that. Hint, hint, Salesforce. If you can <laughs> stop trying to nickel and dime me, my goodness. I, to your point, you know, where I'm working a nonprofit healthcare institution and every time I work with these CRMs, it's like, here's this phenomenal product we have for you. Oh, you're a nonprofit. Well, this is actually the bucket over here for you. But if you want to pay <laughs> the additional, you know, $1,500, we can get you into that Bentley that has the told you so, you know, license plate drive around Vegas, right? But yeah. until then, until then. And, and, and you know what? It, 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 it actually pisses me off because, uh, 
it, it is it, it's it's some gatekeeping, right? It's it's, it's preventing the small smaller ones to to you know make be, be successful really. And for us, because we are such a, a sensitive uh, uh, kind of company, you know, we have to to we, you know we store store really important uh, information for our customers, uh, voicemails right. and texts and stuff like that. Um, we have to have our security completely in the top. So one of the things that is just a non-negotiable for any service that we buy is single sign-on uh, that we can uh, you know, log on and we can log a customer or a, a user account from an employee down if we need to. And then we don't forget to, to cancel users in different platforms. It's super important for us. And uh, for some reason, that feature seems to be only for enterprises. I don't get it. <laughs> yes, it, it, it does baffle me, the packages and deals. It's, it's like, uh, you, it's kind of like the old saying goes, you have to have money to make money. Kind of, kind of thing, right? Now, what would you say, you know, going through your career, what would you say is something that you went through that helped you be successful today? Well, I think I've um, I've always had to fight for everything. It, it probably also comes with the ADD thing and not understanding what that was. But I've never been that good looking kid that's plays the guitar and is really good at that football and, you know, uh, that all the girls want. Um, and I've not, not been the funny guy either. Uh, you know, I've... I, and I've ne never been a natural at anything good, but I will put in the most hours. There's no doubt about that. So I will become the best eventually. Um, but 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 that's definitely been been throughout my whole life. Uh, you know, as far back as I can remember, remember, I've always had to to kind of fight for everything. I've never had a mentor. Uh, you know, I've wished I had one that could could you know just give me the shortcuts, tell me you know the the little things that you don't learn from reading a book or going to, going to school. These little, or you know, giving you the context to speak to the right people and 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 the caveats and all that stuff. Um, I think that's really, really, really important. And I, I've started to understand that later on that I should probably actively have looked for one. But it's really hard to find a mentor because to me, a mentor is not just someone who you you just like get on board and talk. It's someone who is as vested in whatever you're doing as you are uh, and and wants to see you succeed as much as you do. And because without that, you, you you know, it's just a person that that will tell you a little bit here and there. But if you have that one person in your corner that has done this before and has this knowledge, and is is you know likes you and wants to you to succeed, then it's super super important. It's super super powerful. And I've seen some of my my colleagues or friends you know have that, and and I really envy it. Um, but yeah, I think I think my whole life has been this this thing, and I'm I'm just like one of those little uh, toys that just like tip over and or you can knock over and it just like flips back up and boing boing boing, you know, like <laughs> so so I'll, I'll keep going. But um, yeah, I definitely had quite a bit of that. Love it, and you know, I think the purpose on mentors I think is really important. I've had a mentor uh, kind of in a transition, uh, a new mentor as as I kind of do a different career path, right? Um, but, you know, with that said, folks, I hope this podcast, I hope you can use it as kind of a mentoring because as, as you know, Peter mentioned, I really want to expose and bring to light some of those things that aren't in the book, right? The things that the entrepreneurs do go through that I really want you to succeed in, in learning about. And in addition to that, you know, you can, this is a great time to plug the, the newsletter. You can actually subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter at theshadesofe.com. Again, this comes out every Wednesday, a lot of great entrepreneurial nuggets. Um, in fact, you can also stream this show because Peter said he's not a good looking guitar player. I will detest, <laughs> he's a goddamn good looking guy right here. And this hair is Man I have good hair, immaculate, immaculate <laughs> hair. So I, what I want you to do, folks, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can actually watch this uh, podcast as well as stream it. Or if you're so inclined to, you can join our Patreon page. It's a fan page. It's $5 a month. And you'll actually receive this video a week before it airs on uh, audio. In addition, you'll have uh, access to our book that I wrote as well as some other valuable assets. Now, Peter, before we go, what what advice would you have for an aspiring entrepreneur that's looking into getting into the business and looking into the jumping in the entrepreneurial pool? Be ready for the perpetual roller coaster. It's never gonna end. You think it's gonna end? It's never gonna end. It's ups and downs uh, a lot, and you really have to have the stomach for it. But it's also incredibly rewarding if you go through with this and you as if it's for you. Uh, for me, it's not about the money. It's about the fact that I can do whatever I want whenever I want, but I can't. There's no way I can. <laughs> but the, the the thing in your in the back of your head that that I could go down right now and 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 go to a store and buy something that that you know uh, without having to ask for to leave my 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 office, that 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 feeling is worth everything. And I think 
that's really if you go to prison that's the whole what that's all about it's about taking that away uh, you know the your free will to do so so being an entrepreneur is the exact opposite of that you work towards you know you're willing to work 80 hours a week to work to to, to not work 40 hours a week right it's, yeah. it's but but it's it's worth every single every every part of it yeah it's it's true. I, I put this meme on my uh, Instagram account. So, folks, if you like memes, I put one. It's the the Star Wars, you know, of uh, of um, when young Skywalker, right, and he's getting married, and he's like, it's a it picture. It's like, oh, so you took the day off, right? It's like, oh, I'm not. Uh, I took the day off, and then it's the wife. So you're not working, right? And then it's the guy like looking at him, like, oh, I didn't say I wasn't working. I just said I took the day off because again. With entrepreneurship, yeah. there really are no days off. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm cracking away and I'm in the middle of the beach and still doing something, but that's just how it goes. Oh, yeah. So, Peter, but it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> no, it doesn't feel like work. Not if you love it. Not at all. Well, Peter, yeah. thank you again so much for your time. A uh, last question. If folks are interested in getting in contact with you, maybe they want to follow you on the social sites. How can they get in contact with you? Uh, Petersroder.com is uh, my website. There's all the social media stuff and my email. If you want to get in touch with me, please do. I love getting. You know, actually, people reach out to me instead of sales bots. <laughs> yes, yeah, I get a lot of sales you know. bots. Yeah. I love it. So, so do that. Uh, Petersroder.com. There's also links to uh, to tell you and all that stuff. Perfect. So again, Petersroder.com. If you forget that, you can also subscribe to the newsletter on the shades of e.com, which will have Peter's information the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and the week after the episode airs. You can also subscribe to Apple or Spotify podcasts. You can follow us on the social sites, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Again, very important. You have the YouTube. Uh, you can actually watch these videos now. So I really appreciate it. Peter, thank you again so much for your time. Uh, I really do appreciate you uh, coming out here and having this conversation. Super insightful, very educational, a uh, uh, really good talk. Folks that listening at home, please take care of yourself. Thank you and have a great night.